So here's my newest project. I am, have taken apart one of my old Ryobi motors. This was the one that was used originally in the scooter project my dad was working on. And it overheated. And it still works. But I've been thinking about epoxy, epoxy encapsulation. I've uh, seen things about how some of the new motors, they actually use epoxy as a heat transfer agent, essentially, to cover the windings. Well, uh, this motor is a great candidate for it. I, if you look inside of it, it is really burned inside. Uh, so it still works, but it's probably not far from shorting out. So I'm going to test the theory on this and see how it works. Uh, I'm also planning on putting in some new rubber sealed uh, bearings that I got. These look like they might be an upgrade. I want to see if I can increase the durability of these motors. Uh, they work pretty good, but if they're stressed and get overheated, then they can fail. So we'll see what happens with this. This could be an epic fail here. I'm using this potting compound, this Max EPC. Uh, potting compound. I've never used this before. have no idea what I'm doing. So this could be an epic fail. We'll see. Uh, this part here, I have made something to hold the epoxy in with. This is just a part I 3D printed. So what we're going to do is the motor. I've coated it, first of all, before I go on. I have coated it with petroleum jelly so that hopefully the epoxy won't stick to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just take this. That sits down nice and snug on there. That should keep it from leaking on me. Especially when you seat it down in there good. Um, it's printed so that it should keep it away. I may have to machine it a little bit when I'm done. But we're going to pour epoxy compound into there after I mix some up. And see how this works. Alright, so I've mixed up my resin. And... I'm going to attempt to pour this. This will probably have to be done in a series of pours to get it to come out right. I used 40 milliliters of epoxy with 10 milliliters of the hardener for this pour. When I'm actually done, I'll be able to tell you how much epoxy it took.
So now here is the completed first pour. It looks like most of it went down in there quite well. We'll see how that sets up. I'll have to let it sit for 24 hours, then clean my equipment and do another pour. It looks like it's probably not even going to take as much to do the second time. I also have another 3D printed rim that I'm going to put up over the top to make it so it doesn't flow out of here. And then I'll have to clean it up and see if it works, but so far so good. So I did my second pour and it was a little messier. Uh, because of the motor windings having some damage there, I think it made it hard for my second ring to fit there. I'm going to try to get this down where you can see. But you're not going to see much. The problem I had was a little bit of seepage around that edge if I didn't get it good and snug. So I ended up putting the bottle on top of it. So the second pour was a little messier than I would have liked. But it seems to have worked. It took less... I used 100 milliliters and there's it's hard to see in there but there's still probably about 20 to 30 milliliters left so i'm going to say about 70 milliliters is all that it takes to do this so if you're using this compound and if my math is worth anything this should do about 11 to maybe 15 motors so not bad if it works, we'll have to wait for this to cure and I'll know more tomorrow. So here's the motor after running for that time. I also want you to be able to see that it cleaned up good. This was with all the housing pieces removed, the rest of the motor sitting right here. It all looks good. Um, material here is relatively hard. There's some soft edges that I'm not sure about. Perhaps I didn't get my glue mixed correctly because the stuff I had in the container hardened better. Not sure what that indicates, but it cleaned up nicely. I did, of course, have to break my little plastic 3D printed uh, filler, and in here I had to use a uh, wire brush to clean out all the excess glue get this finish. Let me set this down and I'll show it to you from a different angle. Here's the top side of it or bottom, whichever way you want to call it, where the wiring is that end. Uh, this end cured nice and hard. There's a little bubble there over here. But it, this cured really well. So the motor's working, I'm going to put it back together, and I guess it's going to be a long-term test to find out how well it works. Uh, the new bearings seem to be working good. And of course I'll 3D print one of my cap pieces for here to put on it. Uh, but it now has the new uh, rubber seal bearings. So. Uh, if something happens to this motor after some time, I'll post another video explaining about it. And maybe if I figure out if it fails and what it fails of, maybe I'll know more. So the motor is now set up and running with the new encapsulated uh, motor and new uh, bearings. Uh, I'm going to periodically bring out this laser thermometer and we're going to check the temperatures and see how it's doing. Hopefully this will stay more stable. The temperatures on it before fluctuated more. You'd have so here we are a half hour later. And it is hot, hot, hot. Now to be fair, what I should have done was ran this for a half hour like that before because I do know this motor was bad to start with. Also, it may be helping to get the heat out of it. So again, I'm not entirely sure. But what I do know is the outside is very hot. 
So here we are a half hour later. Let's see what we get for readings. Dad had stuck a fan out here on it earlier, which I don't think it needs. It's been another hour at least. Uh, I did put a cooling fan back on over here just to see how that would affect it. I got to thinking about it. The motor did have a cooling fan on when it's a... Uh, regular mower there's one attached to it so I was like well perhaps it uh, needs one I do use one on my drive motor so let's see what temperatures we get now These appear to be much better, so perhaps it's just moving the heat outward better, and then of course once you use a cooling fan it cools that heat off of it, because that's within operating temperatures, uh, from what I've read a typical operating temperature for an electric motor is about 150 degrees, now of course to be fair it's not under a load, but It is running at full throttle, so...